trying to find creativity, trying to find something that helps inspire you to start drawing more, or to maybe think of something to paint. Whatever the medium, getting out some helps me find inspiration to create things. So what I've done here recently in the past two or three days is I've gone to a local park, a local reservoir, and I took some photos. And so what I'm going to do here is go through these photos and I'll point out things that give me ideas for drawing and doodling things such as the textures and the shape of the things that I'm seeing. So we're going to go ahead and start with this first photo here of this rock. And as you can see here, it's got these really weird shapes going on all around it. It looks kind of like those crop circles that you see um, in fields and whatnot. But yeah, they're all over these rocks. I, and I took a picture of one of them. And the other ones that had this, these patterns on it, they weren't as pronounced as this one here. Um, these ones are pretty big here. I can zoom in and show you. Um, looks like they were hit with like little mini asteroids or something. Um, and then there is over here grass laying all over it and other little particles of stuff. But I'm looking at the texture of it and I see these areas that are darker. Um, the rock where it goes from light to dark. And I see the texture of that and it's um, a bit interesting to look at. Like this here. When I look at this in this photo, to me it looks like I'm looking down on a mountain range or something. Um, like I'm flying on an airplane. And if you actually think about it, it looks like looking down on Mercury. Um, you know, it's got all the little asteroid impacts and it's got the little cliffs and, and all that going on. I was going to say Mars, but Mars is red, different color. Um, so, yeah, that kind of looks interesting to me. Like if you think about it um, as well. These little areas here could look like little valleys where water could be flowing. Um, that looks like a, just a big, really big mountain range. And then these here, there's like little little bugs that run there. They're really tiny. I did I did take a photo of them in another picture that I'll be showing you. And let's see here, what else? Yeah, they look like they could be these asteroid impacts on mercury or maybe dried up lakes or something like that but if you just ignore all these little pieces of leaves and plants and whatnot and you just focus on this area here it definitely looks like a mountain range and I guess that looks like it could be a cave that's where I hide and do all of my caveman drawings and whatnot um, let's see here. I'm trying to see if I find any other interesting things in this. Yeah, that looks kind of like a valley of uh, cliffs as well. This looks like it could be some giant cliff that goes off into the abyss of darkness and to never be found but I found that area there really interesting to look at but um, let's go ahead and take a look how this is zoomed out and it's a pretty big difference in the look of it when you get in close so let's go ahead and take a look at the next picture and this here is just more rocks of uh, which is around the reservoir there and let's go ahead and zoom in See if we can find anything interesting here in the texture of it. It just looks like a bunch of rocks to me. Well, I actually, I actually like this texture right here. It kind of looks like the texture on the bottom of a tire or shoes. And then... Depending on how you look at this shadow here, it makes it look like you can't tell if you're looking down or looking up. But I do like the texture of that right there on the rock. 
And then we have, kind of looks like a face there, somewhat. Looks like a some guy's face and he's wearing a mask that makes him look like a bird or an eagle. And then we've got other little textures here and there. Not seeing a whole lot of things that are very interesting in this, but I shall continue looking. Hope you don't mind all the clicks from my mouse. Um, I was going to use my other screen for this, but I would be looking down and I spend a lot of time looking down as it is when I'm drawing, so it kind of makes my neck hurt, but I don't really see a whole, oh wait, I think there's a ladybug right there in the very far corner. Oh, I'm already zoomed in. I don't think I can zoom in any more than that. I don't think so. Hmm. Yep. Don't see much of anything else interesting in that. Moving on to the next one. This is just the view of uh, the reservoir. There's a little dock there, some rocks. Um, there's a the bench over there. Sometimes I'll sit there and draw if I go out there early in the morning. I usually get up at like four and then I try to get out there, be there at six because that's when the sun's rising and I have just uh, just the right time to take some photos. The best time to take photos um, or video is the hour, the first hour when the sun rises and the first hour before the sun sets. Those are the two best times to do photography or um, time lapses of sunrises and sunsets. Um, don't really see much of anything interesting here. I've got, there's like some posts and stuff here that are broken. And I have some photos coming up that are closer up of that. And this here kind of makes me think of the ocean of a ship. A big anchor or something like that. And... There's some spider webs right here. Some spider webs coming across it. And it's really rusty. A little spider web there. It's another one that comes down through it. I wonder how long it's been there. It kind of reminds me of something like Titanic or something like that. Or just a part of a boat. That's all I can really think of when it comes to that. But the texture of this here and the color of it makes me want to do some drawing with a dip pen or maybe a fountain pen with brown ink. And this here kind of looks like um, the tubing you see for um, like underneath houses or um, construction sites. Those, those big um, tubes they use that go under roads or the water flows through it. I forget they're what they're called though. I can't remember the word for it. But anyways, it looks like those big um, plastic black tubing that they put underneath the roads to where water can flow under it. Um, or it looks like a part of a straw. The texture of it there does at least. But that's more so the color of Mars there than the other picture. So moving on to the next one. This is just another one of the uh, same one. You can see a little bit more since the, the picture is brighter here. You can see the texture of the chain links. And more spider webs. It kind of looks like coral right there. The way that the chain link has been rusted and fell apart. more spider web this is this another one from a different angle and you can see a little bit of post there the rocks and everything now I got the blurry background just by changing the um, settings of my DSLR such as the f-stop if I make the f-stop lower it makes the background more blurry but it also brightens the image so then I have to lower the ISO or lower the aperture um, the aperture is pretty much like how fast um, the camera is taking the picture. For example, if I, I think I'm saying that right, I get a couple of terms mixed up sometimes. I have to go look again. But 
or the shutter speed is it's when uh, how long the image is exposed to the camera so the longer it's exposed the brighter it is because it's going to be letting in more light the faster the shutter speed the less light is letting in and so therefore you have to raise the ISO and lower the f-stop do both or one of the two now when you lower the f-stop then you can drop your ISO down but it makes the background more blurry so depending on how you want the image to look um, that's going to affect it and if you raise the ISO um, you'll have to raise the f-stop higher the ISO brighter lower the ISO um, less lights coming in and I had a um, f-stop of I think it was four for this because I was using my um, 55 to 250 zoom lens and it's a 4 to 5.6 f-stop and this is a pretty sure it's an f4 so that's how I can get a bit of the blurry background although I do have another camera lens that is the 50 millimeter Canon it's called the nifty 50 and that one uh, the f-stop goes down to 1.8 so I can get a really blurry image but it's a prime lens it, it the advantage is that I can shoot in lower light I can get a more blurry background it's a bit sharper but the disadvantage of it is that I can't zoom or anything prime lenses are fixed but they are better than zoom lim lenses at that focal length but the advantage of uh, zoom lenses is that you can zoom in in and out so next one is this is just the wood here I think I rambled on long enough about my camera but maybe I'll go into detail sometime about that but here is one of the posts that was on uh, near the dock there and I like the texture of the wood here it's kind of like the wood there is kind of like spiraling up and this here the wood like if you look at it and, and like you squint your eyes kind of it kind of looks like a guy that's like sad or something like a droopy face um or like if you're looking at this and you imagine that's the ocean and that you're looking at like a gigantic cliff and i guess that's what it could be and that's just like little tiny trees if you look at it that way um, and the green here I can't tell I think some of the green is actually on there but the light that's reflecting off of the grass underneath it is making it more green so but yeah, I like, like the texture in that there I probably should have used a higher f-stop so that less of it was blurry so that I could get more of this here in focus because it was midday, I mean, I had my ISO at uh, 100 the lowest. I probably could have raised it to 200 and raised my f-stop and made it a bit more uh, more in focus. So, moving on to the next one is the same as that, but this one has, as you can see here, a slightly higher f-stop, so more of it is in focus, and the ISO is still the same, but my shutter speed changed a little bit I had to drop down my shutter speed to be a little bit slower and that's because I raised my f-stop and that makes it a bit darker so I had to comp compensate for that and uh, so let's go ahead and take a look here pretty much uh, I can't tell if it's a spider web or if it's like a little piece of a uh, plant or something stuck in there I'm not quite sure but moving along here a little tiny spider web there then is that a bug I can't tell what that is right there it might be a tiny little one and there's like a little tiny spider web there but I like the texture of that it looks kind of like in a way the rocks we were looking at earlier like you know when you look at volcanoes and it's got like all the jagged edges everywhere and they're like overlapping one another that's kind of what that looks like to me we'll go ahead and go to the next photo 
And this is just some sign that was there I took a photo of. I don't even know why, but I was taking photos of completely random things. Just for fun and for practice, but... Um, oh, I know one thing it was. It was, a, it was a texture of this here. It's got kind of like a honeycomb texture almost to it. And kind of found that interesting. Give me a little bit of an idea for doing mandalas or something like that. But it also kind of looks like fish netting or something of that nature. And I think yeah, there's a little spider web there. And then there's a little cloud in the background. Next photo. These look like looks like that wheat grass or something. Um, you know what was that movie? I forget the name of it. Um, I almost remember it. I almost remember the name. Not, not the movie Troy. I think it had Russell Crowe in it. Why am I forgetting it? Gladiator, yes, the movie Gladiator. The one scene where he's like walking out in the field, and there's like all this wheat. That's what that looks like to me. But um, who knows? They're probably just weeds. But it looks like it kind of. I'm uh don't know a whole lot about all, all that stuff. But anyways, it kind of looks like that, and um, it's like the texture of them, the shapes they have. They look look like little kind of uh little wheat plants or something. So there's some, some this one's more in focus. You can see it better over here. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next one. Um, same thing, but just a slightly different angle different parts of it are in focus here and same thing here but you got a little bit more of uh the background over there where the rocks are in focus as well i think out of these three i think that might be the best one this one and the, or this one this one's kind of out of focus that one's pretty good though and this is really blurry and that one's pretty good though i like uh the green and the red colors and I can't tell if that's a little bug there or not but I do like drawing organic stuff things that are in nature and looking at a lot of different plants and flowers it gives me a lot of ideas and I try to just I can't photographically remember it but I'll just draw a lot of it over and over again and then eventually after a lot of practice I kind of get that just ingrained in my memory and then I can draw it but here's some of the textures of it I really like this one here it looks it looks like some kind of well a couple things come to my mind when I see this one I think of milk that was spilled and was left there in the sun and then this is what ha was left of it. Two, I think of like ice cream that was left on a sidewalk and then melted. And three, it makes me think of some paint that was spilled and now it's stuck there. Number four, it makes me think of a marshmallow that melted in the sun on the sidewalk. Or if you look at it in a different way, you kind of squint your eyes a little bit and you get a bit creative. It can kind of look like you're looking at another planet again. Um, I don't know what planet you would think it would be. Maybe Mercury again? Because of the um, black and white rocks. But I think there's a, a tiny little bug over here. Yeah, right there, there's another little bug. But yeah, there's all kind of little textures and crevices and cracks and all kinds of stuff going on in this image. But, um, there's a couple little speckles here and shining in the light. But I like how the, um, the image around it is kind of like dark and then the center is bright. Now, it, it must have been something that had to do with my lens. Uh, the vignetting around it is kind of dark, but the rocks are also dark and then the center of it's lighter. It gives it a pretty cool effect. 
Be also being that it was uh, around midday almost, I think it was like noon. It was around noon. And so the sunlight's mostly coming straight down just about. But here I think it's a little bit green on the rock. And there's some other textures here. That kind of looks like a coral texture as well. There's that little red bug again. But if you're looking at this, it makes me kind of imagine that I'm looking at a forest. Like, actually, you know, it looks like I'm looking down on Alaska or somewhere where there's snow. And there's trees all around it. And like these little green spots would be trees. And this is like maybe a mountain range. Or maybe there was water there and it dried up. Um, and that right there. A tiny little crack would be maybe like a little stream. And then let's see if there's anything else interesting over here. A lot of that's not in focus. Hmm. I guess that could be like a cave or something if you're looking at it and imagine that it was a mountains and cliffs and all that. I like that one. Interesting. Let's go on to the next one here. And this um, this is just that um uh, bug that I What the I thought it was like a little I don't know what that is. It looks like some kind of spider or something. I'm not quite sure. Hmm. I can't tell if it looks like a spider, um, a tiny little crab or something. I'm not sure. Maybe I should get my DSLR and do some macro photography of some of this stuff. I'd have to get pretty close, I think. Well, no, actually I don't. I don't think I do. I have a, a um, reversing ring that I use on my DSLR. And I just attach it to the um, end of the uh, lens. I flip the lens around, then I attach it to my DSLR, and I can zoom in and get macro. But what's really weird is that when I use a reversing ring, I'm actually zoomed in more the shorter the um, focal length. For example, when I'm using my kit lens, I'm zoomed out more at 55, but I'm zoomed in more at 18 because of reversed. So if I'm like if I'm using the kit lens at 18, it's like so such a tiny amount of focus that you get. You have to like just a tiny movement within just a fraction of a millimeter, and like it will either be in focus or out of focus. But I think I'll I'll try to use my zoom lens and see how it looks um, with some of this, but. I do know that 18 to 55 with the reversing ring is uh, really zoomed in. So, but I just bring all of them with me. I'll use um, either one, and I'll test it and see. But this could be maybe some kind of alien bug, and we're on a different planet. And who knows? There, oh, I remembered another movie. I can't remember the name of it. I haven't seen these in like 20 years. It's been a while, but. This looks like either some kind of crab or a spider or something. It's got like a really strange texture on its back and it's like little legs. Um, let's see here. But yeah, looks like it could be an alien on an alien planet. I do like the texture of this rock here. All the different little patches of uh, white areas and the black areas and like there's like little tiny speckles of white and black dots all over the place. Like if you just cover this little bug up. And he made his picture a lot darker. I could imagine seeing it as like looking out at the sky. You'd have to really lower the exposure of the image a lot though to get that look. And then raise the highlights. And darken the shadows. But pretty interesting here. With our strange little, uh, strange little bug we got. But Next picture. And this is just looking out off of that dock. And the water and everything there but um, not a whole lot to see there that's the same thing looking off of the dock uh, the water there some rocks and trees skyline and whatnot 
Um, I like the shadows of this here, though. I think that was that one. I don't, I don't remember if that was the one that I took the photo of already that you've seen or not. But I think it was this one. It might have been that one. No, no, it wasn't. That was one that the post before you even get here. Never mind. I remember what it was now. It was that was that was way before this. So on the next one, and like how these are just moving in the wind, and you got these little posts here. Those little posts there, um, like this here, these were the ones that you've seen where I was zoomed in on the uh, the wood. But yeah, it's got little rocks all over, and um, these here. And um, I did walk across these for fun, just to test my balance, I guess. But I don't really see a whole lot interesting here. It's just a nice image overall, I think. And I'm uh, going to move on. And we've got ourselves a little plant here. I like taking pictures of a lot of plants and nature and birds, as I said before. And I like how it's got the little veins going through it and... Uh, all the little shapes like here um where is it these two spots here like the red and green again and then like the little veins that go through it and uh whole, it looks like little tiny thorns at the edge of it or something and then you have uh a little more little thorns down here and this looks like, I don't know what that is. It looks like little tiny speckles of crumbs or something on it. Hmm. I can't tell if a plant's supposed to be that color there or, or the plant's dying or something. Don't know. But I like the color and shape of it. Moving on to our next picture. Um, I don't know why I took this one. I think, oh, I think I know what it was. I was trying to get focus of that more, but my f-stop was too low. So I just took it anyways just to see how it would look, but yeah, not a whole lot there, really. Um, I guess even though that this post here goes beyond this, like it goes this direction, like when you look at it, it looks like there's one little post here rather than all of that. Or maybe it could be like a post that's uh, just flying through the air and it's going really fast and it's going to hit us in the face and that's just the stream of the air behind it but uh let's go to the next one and this is the one that was that piece of wood that uh, we saw that was on the um dock that we we're looking at earlier it's like the texture of all the um wood that's jagged and going up and down and it kind of spirals and it kind of reminds me of uh some of the castles and things i've seen in movies and it reminds me a little bit of lord of the rings and um, some of the, the buildings they had in there and I uh, like how it does look like cliffs and little ledges for um, the edge of a mountain or something like that and the way I took this it kind of looks like I'm in a desert or something because of the color of the background there and uh, pretty interesting to look at and there's a little tiny spider web over here which you can see there and then the little textures in that too. It's kind of a like grainy looking texture to it. it. Looks like it's kind of in burn or something, but not quite. Um, let's see here. There's more jagged edges. So yeah, it kind of curves up some, like right here. You can see it goes up and around. Next one. This is just another photo of the same one. and But I took it with this area here as well. And it does look like it's been burned or something down here. Yeah, I think it has. In that area. And, uh... Gives it a different texture. Oh! Oh, excuse me. Um... Kind of looks like a mouth or something coming down, and like, oh, I got an idea. This can be like the mouth. That's the tooth, and like this is the face, and that's like the little horn, 
and this is like a helmet or it could be like a giant dragon's head or like a cross between King Kong and a dragon <laughs> huh but anyways moving forward and I just took this because it made me think of like uh, being on a little island like you're looking down from the plane and you see like a huge island with the big cliffs on the side of it and uh, that's kind of the idea that I had when I was looking at this although that you'd have to try to disregard these big giant lines that go into the concrete under it we just put that aside and uh, just look at this then um, I can imagine seeing it as a, a little uh, stranded island like the movie Castaway and that came out what was that 20 years ago or more it's been a while um, I think it's like a little feather there not a whole lot to see because this is all in focus and this is all blurry but I do like the texture of this here um, little ripples in the water and the waves and uh, whatnot there and yeah, this is like the dry area and that part of the rocks all wet and then hmm, little tiny rocks over there as well and this is just a view of the uh, rocks and everything from the side of the dock there and you can see little ripples in the water and the uh, ripples in the water as the light shines through it you get the little effect of uh, these lines going through the rocks here you can see there I think it's pretty interesting to look at as well you get a little ripple there in the water oh there's a little bit of texture on this rock I like I don't see any, I didn't really see any fish in here hardly. Although there was one. I do have a surprise for you coming up. This I thought that was a minnow or something, but I guess it's nothing. I don't really see much of anything in this one. Other than oh I just really like the way the light looked in it. And this is uh one of the birds. I believe I believe it's called a crane. And um it was walking towards me and kept getting closer and I had recorded, I have a, a video of me going there and uh, looking at things and I'll leave a link in the video so you can check that out and it kept walking towards me and just kept staring at me and uh, I was taking photos and videos of it and it took a, maybe 15-20 minutes before it flew away there's another photo of it, it's a little bit out of focus I think, let me take a look no, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's pretty good. Though I think, no, it's it's. I think it looks fine. But yeah, he was uh going around looking to get some food. He's got like a big feather there. Looks like he's got like a mohawk or something going on. Just another picture of it from a different angle. He's faced that way. Now he's facing this way. And now he looks like he's looking out at something over there. Maybe he's staring at me. I'm not sure. It could be one of the two. But I was surprised by how good these photos actually turn out from uh, this DSLR. It's the Canon T7i or the Canon 8 800D, and it does pretty good for what for what I need. I mean, I got it all on sale about a year ago. And it's it's way more than I thought I would even need. Um, it does a great job. And here's a bit of a closer up view of it. And he's like little mohawks like stuck up. And he looks like he's really focused on something out in the water. Um, because he was looking more directly at me. So. Kind of looks like an ostrich in a way. But. He's got a cool uh, hair hairstyle going on there, <laughs> and uh, another view of him. You see the, the light reflecting off of these rocks here, like the highlights of that there. Really stands out from the rest of the image where this is all really dark. And that's 
next one. Same view of it, but I took it at an angle because I wanted the picture to be more widescreen rather than up and down. And then this here is just a little uh, silo thing over there. And then more highlights of the water, light reflecting off of it, and all the rocks. I did turn the contrast down on my DSLR, so if what I do is I turn the contrast down. I, I well, I set it to fine detail. I turn the contrast all the way down. I set it to daylight for this um, setting. As far as the white balance, although you can, you can get like little cards you can use that um, will help you with the white balance, and I set it to daylight. And then I set it to autofocus. And when I focus in on it, I just I, I select a spot, I push the button, and it focuses. And then I can go back. So if I want something blurry, I can just focus on the rock. And then take the picture over there of the bird or something. So that's kind of how that works. But yeah, he's just he's over here hanging out uh, looking for fish because he's hungry. Another view of him from a different angle. He's got like a little, little bit of red on his feather right there, I think. Like a brown or something. But. And here goes his, his hairstyle again. Looks like he gelled his hair today. And this is probably my one of my favorite photos of the day that I took. Um, I like the color of it the saturation the sharpness the shadows and everything are really good in this picture i think um, the focus is pretty good too so yeah this was with my 55 to 250 millimeter lens his hair isn't sticking up here but he's got a little little tiny bit of a feather falling off there but he was kind of staring at me again, but then he like saw something in the water. But this is my personal favorite picture of all of these, I think. Um, I'll have to look at the other ones and think about that again. But of the birds, this is my favorite, but this might be one of my favorites. Um, as I'm going through these, go ahead and tell me what your favorite one is and why that is. And let me know in the comments below and we can discuss that. And uh, let's go ahead and go to the next picture. There's another view of him from a diff different angle here. And a little bit of rocks in the background, water, sky, and trees. There's another view of him. I'm going to go ahead and move along here and go to uh, different pictures. Oh, that's just a picture of him at the right side. I want him in the image, but I also wanted to have a bit of view of the other things going on. And this one's the same thing, but with him on the other side of it, with the rocks and everything. And I like it because the rocks, you know, it's kind of high and it comes down. It's all dark and it's not much, much color. Then it goes over here. Then he really stands out because he's, he's taller than the rocks. And there's more saturation over in that area. And you get a little bit of highlights in the water. Um, the sunlight reflecting on the rocks. Move on. Same thing there, but I just change the angle of it so that the rocks that are closer to me are uh, real blurry and this is when he caught a fish I had recorded him doing that and he was like really focused on me and then he saw something in the water then he instantly flew up and went over there and uh, caught himself a fish I don't know what kind of fish that is Those of you that do fishing um, or that know about fish, go ahead and let me know in the comments uh, what type of fish that is. It's got a lot of like little spikes there. Maybe it's a bass. I have no idea. I have not gone fishing in so long. Um, it's been maybe ten year, ten years at least, or longer. It could be ten to fifteen, probably fifteen years since we've gone fishing. Something like that it hasn't been since I was about 12, but it's been a while. Go ahead and do the next one. Just another view of him, but he was uh, looking out at the water. 
Kind of looks like he's smiling here, but has a serious look to his face. <laughs> his little hairs, uh... Keep calling them hairs, they're, they're feathers, though. But, um... It looks like he does have a hair... Hairstyle going on again. I'll gel back. And... This was just random trash that I would found that people had left. So I just randomly took photos of them. No particular reason, but I just did. And it was there. Um, I think if I was to take a photo of every single piece of trash I see, I would be there for days and days. There's a, there's a lot of random stuff lying around, like little pieces of things here and there. And this is another one, just a protein bar. I don't know why they would just throw it in the ground because it's such a tiny little piece of plastic that you can just stick it in your pocket. Or maybe they they lost it, but if they threw it in the ground, I don't see the point because it's such a little small piece of plastic that nothing, I don't know why. But anyways, moving on. And I really like this photo as well, along with the bird one. I like that the flowers are in focus and so is the bug. Uh, they're these little like looks like some kind of fly or something. And he's trying to uh, get some nectar or something from the flower. Pretty sure that's what they get from them, just like bees do, right? They get the nectar. And uh, yeah, I like the color of it. There's there doesn't seem to be any chromatic aberration with this lens. It I think is better than my kit lens for sure. Um, but the advantage of my kit lens is that I can get you no know, wide open. Like I can, um, or it's uh, I get more things in view, whereas this more zoomed in. But it's more of a it's more of a versatile, handy type of a lens than my kit lens, I think, because I can zoom in on things really close, and I can be far from things but still get a lot in it as well. So it kind of just depends. I mean, I it's really good for macro photography, even if I zoom in on it really well. Although if I get close with my camera, I can't. It doesn't. It doesn't have a very good um, ability to focus on things if it's really close. Like if my camera's here, and something's here, it won't focus. I have to move it like a foot and a half away. So what I do is I zoom in all the way on something and I take the photo, but. I like that one. There's a couple more here of this as well. And that's just some random piece of plastic cup or something that was laying there. So go back. And, uh, but yeah, there's just some piece of plastic that was laying there. As I said, it was, um, just taking pictures of random trash that was laying around. And here, I like the texture of these little, um, these little plants. It looks like some kind of lavender plant or something. Somewhat similar, but not quite. But I like the texture of how it just kind of sprouts and goes all over the place. And then you've got the red, and it really contrasts well against the blue in the background. And uh, I think what's mostly in focus is this here. And everything else is kind of just blurry. But I purposely did that with my f-stop so that when I took the picture, it made it look like um, like a painting as if something was smeared across the image but yeah there's just another one of that more weeds and whatnot and this just some rocks uh, what I like about it is just that the amount of rocks that there are it gives me like you can you can kind of just see all kinds of things if you just look at it like different faces in them maybe or like yeah like this looks like a little tiny statue and there's like a little face there maybe you can see it can't you but yeah moving along to the next one just a view looking down the um paved path that goes around the place there's a little bench down there it's one of them there's like I think it's like 10 benches or so all around the thing, maybe 10 or 12, I can't remember. I'll count them one day. And I like this one as well. I think there's a couple of these. 
of the little bug in the flower and I have a couple of photos I took of some flowers as well but I like uh, the colors of it it's um, interesting to look at as well the little textures looks like some kind of like little tentacles coming up out of it and then it's all in pretty good focus I would say but I like the little purple flowers and the purple lines that go through it and then I'm I put my f-stop as low as I can make it I think I had an f4 and just made everything else blurry I mean the lens the lens I would like to get is I mean it's like a thousand dollars and I'm, I'm not paying that much I'm not paying that much for a lens at this moment I'm going to just use these lenses until to my heart's content until I just I, I'm tired of using them I don't, I don't think I ever get tired of using them I mean when I get to the point where I have enough money saved up, then sure, maybe uh, I would upgrade, but I don't see the point in doing it right now. I want to get the practice in first, but here's another view of it. And go ahead and let me know which of these you like. Um, you like this view of it or this view? Um, I kind of, well, I think I prefer that one maybe. Just because you get all the blurry effect around it kind of makes it stand out more well that's the same but just cropped in more not really sure and these um, I was trying to get a photo of these ants but they kept moving I think there might be one or two there but it's all blurry here's one of them one of the little ants right there there's a whole bunch of them they had like their little Little home that they were bringing stuff to and food and everything else. And sometimes you look at stuff and you zoomed in with the the camera. Um, like makes you wonder, like when you're walking somewhere, how much stuff is just on the ground that you don't even realize um, or think about looking at until you look at it and realize how much stuff is just kind of all over the place. So, like. The times when my apartment's messy, I'm like, you know, it's messy, but then, like, when you look at this, there's just so much stuff everywhere. And this is part of their little home. And what is this? Looks like some kind of weird plant. But that's one of the little ants. I almost got him in focus, but not quite. Looks like he got some food there. Maybe some kind of beetle or something like that. And he's in focus in this one here. Um, ta -da. A little yellow flower. And I'm going to take a look at him. But that's, uh, that's a little ant there. You should give him a name. What should we name him? And this is like some kind of weird gooey looking stuff in the ground. I don't even know what that is. But uh, let me know in the comments below what we should name this little ant here. There's one little ant there. I don't really see any other ones in the picture. Hmm. Just more ants all over the place. There's two of them there. There we go. I don't know why that would move in, but um, there's one, two, three. I kind of like the texture of the sand as well. It looks kind of like little pebbles or something. They got like a little pebble stone road. Yeah, the little house was down in here in this area. The, the little tiny ant hill or ant hole. And then this, what is this? I think it's, looks like it was from a cricket. And there's like weird textures and plants and if I was to go through every single one of these things, I would be here so long. Um, as far as every little individual thing that I see. But, yeah. And I like this because the how there's like a combination of the rocks and the plants. So it kind of looks like some kind of... Uh, how would I put it? It looks like... Not really an alien landscape, but like, uh, kind of like a mix between a swamp and like mountains and 
desert and forest. It's kind of a combination of everything. But yeah, there's a lot of different plants in this. And I just like the combination of that together. That looks like a tongue. Um, let's look over here. I like, I like the red leaf. And then we've got this big root there, or a limb or something. Some type of twig or something. Yeah. And this is the view of uh, part of the area. Um, I just get I'd have to get back really far to get a view of the entire thing. Um, but this is the view of it from the other side. And this was pretty much the same area that I was at when I was when you seen the last photo here. This is only maybe a couple hundred yard um, distance past that. But little clouds, there's a silo again, there's some houses and trees and everything there. There should be like a little bench over here somewhere. But I can't see it. Wait, I think it's there. Huh. It's strange for there not to be a bench in that far of a walking distance. There's there's usually like one there and there and there and there. But I like the texture of the clouds too. I do I do a lot of doodling and stippling of clouds, so that helps give me ideas. And these were some birds that I seen uh, on the side of the reservoir. They're just hanging out down there. There's a bunch of little flowers. And there's a cloud. You know, I think if I took the photo, I wish, uh, I don't know. You think I should take that out, crop it, and not have that on there? And here's the, another picture of the cloud. I'll just take it into the clouds to get ideas. Sometimes you look at something and you don't see anything, then you look at it again, then you've got a different idea. It's kind of like when, you, when you're doing a painting or a drawing and you don't really uh, know what to make. But then, you look at it again um, after you've scribbled a couple things or made a few lines and then you're like, you know, I need to fix this. Work on it some more, take a break and kind of step back and look at it. Flip the image upside down. Um, uh, just take a break and come back to it again and you see different things all the time. So, yeah. I'm trying to think what I see in this. I see a gigantic frog with an eye missing. Like this is his eye, this is his nose, this is his mouth, and then that's all just whispered away. Let's go to the next one is another bird. And uh that focus came out to be pretty good in this image on the bird. Surprised I was able to do that. I mean, it, was, it was pretty far away. I was zoomed in all the way I could get to it. So it was probably about 200 yards away maybe. 100 yards. It was no less than 100 yards but no more than 200 yards away. So. And I like this one too because of the. Looks like a bunch of cliffs. Oh are those are those weird bugs again I think. Take a look. Yes, it is, but they're not in focus, and you can't really see them. But if you look at this, it looks like mountain ranges again, and there's sparkly. There's sparkles all over the rocks, and I think here's a bug. Here's one of those weird alien-looking bugs again over there. They're super tiny, and they look really strange. But I like it because you now it's dark in the one corner here, and then this here, the ridges. In the sunlight, and, uh, yeah, those weird bugs. <laughs> Go to the next one. That's the same uh, rock, but I got some of this in the image. Um, I like the real jagged texture of it that uh, just drops down and looks like uh, 
you know, um, like the earth's mantle and crust and all that stuff. Uh, like how you've got the little, di like the different places that go across and under and hit each other. It kind of looks like that, like it was like part of that and it was just kind of, but, uh, yeah. Let's go to the next one. More random rocks. Um, don't really see a whole lot in this one. Um, some of the pictures I was just taking, just to take pictures, but things like a little flower here. Let me see this. Yeah, a little tiny flower, and this has a huge crack in the rock, and that's more of those rocks that um, we seen earlier in the first image that had all those weird crop circle looking things in it. This kind of looks like, from a distance, it looks like a goat or something. Or maybe a rabbit's face. Like from here, it kind of looks like, a dog, a rabbit, or a cat, or a camel. I'm seeing all kinds of different animals in that, but it looks uh, kind of the same thing from close up. So, um, just some water, nothing special. I was trying to get some photos of some fish, but I didn't see any. More rocks, more water. Still didn't see any fish. Like the ripples in the water, um, like all this here. All the ripples seem to be all going just like that. They're all bouncing off that one rock right there. Here's more rocks and textures and everything. Got the gray rocks, then the brown rocks, then the green rocks. And all different colors. And this kind of looks like you're looking down from the top of a helicopter down at like gigantic ridges and there's this huge drop-offs that goes down into a uh, caverns and all kinds of uh, caves and whatnot but it's kind of strange what you see when you try to look at things from a different perspective or try to imagine looking at it from an aerial view it really changes a lot of things so let's go to the next one again Here's more of uh, flowers, and I find this one uh, to be a very scenic looking, interesting picture. Um, I like, I wish I could have gotten more of the flower in focus because I had just barely got the tips of it. I wish I could have got that there in focus more. I think I had another picture of it, but we'll see here. And this is just a some clouds and some jet streams another jet stream uh, just a different angle and this here is just uh, some tractor and uh, people working out there I can zoom over here but yeah just uh this is like a big uh field area over by where the reservoir is at and uh sometimes um if you wanted to you could like sit there if it's raining and do some drawing but yeah i just i don't know why i took this one really i guess i just found the tractor interesting to look at but Maybe it's the yellows and the greens. Who knows? I just take photos and in the moment, just take the photo and move on. And I like this one because the you see the eagle's wings are spread, and you get the clouds and everything behind it. And I remember the times when I would go on airplane rides, and um, I would look down, I'd see the, see all the clouds and everything, and I would just sit there and think of all the textures I could draw and create. But yeah, there's an, oh, there's another bird over there. Take a look at him up 
close. Yeah. I think that's an eagle. Pretty sure it is. There's some eagles sometimes that are there, but it's hard for me to get up close to them. There's just another photo of him flying around. And this is just some random light post. I think that glass is broken. Let me take a look. Yeah. Pretty sure it is. It's all cracked and, and whatnot through there. More cliff looking uh, ridges on a stump. Um, kind of grainy texture there as well with it. Same thing, grainy texture. Some shadows, and I think that's a bug. I'm not sure. No. This this kind of looks like carpet. Like if you were to like get really close to your carpet, if you're laying on the floor, it kind of looks like carpet in a way. And I really like this one as well. Um, it all came into focus just right, and the flower um, was just just in the right focus, but. I like the star shape. It kind of looks like a um, yeah. This looks like a star to me, or more, you know, one of those um, what are they called? They're in the ocean. Probably something simple like a sea star. And I'm forgetting the name of it, <laughs> but uh, it looks like a little star with like the center of it missing there. I like the different uh, colors it's got on the purple, and the yellow, and the salmon looking red color. Kind of like an orange though. What is this? Looks like something pointing or like an arrow there. And then we have... It's over here. I can't quite see it. Uh, that's nothing. There's some... It looks like scales kind of on that rock. And then this texture here looks like... Maybe the texture you would see on a snake. And uh, but yeah, I would say this is probably up there with the other photo of the uh, bird that I took. This really stands out from everything in the photo. This is the same as that one, but just closer up, as you can see. Um, you can see the little star shape in the center of it better from here. Looks like little tentacles coming out from it. And this is the big, a big stump that was falling apart that I had, had a, took a photo of. You can see all the different little textures in it. And this one, instead of being like pointy, it's like more like it's weaving in and out, like through here. And then it's like more square pieces rather than like pointy pieces. And uh, yeah, the other one was a lot more jagged and pointy. This one looks like a bunch of little square blocks. Like it's Minecraft or something. Some yellow flowers behind it. This is a good photo for, uh, as a reference for a drawing, if you wanted to have something as for a texture. What is this? I don't know why, but from a distance. Like the way this looks to me, it looks like an ear, an ear, and then like a face. It looks like a mouse or something from this, from where I'm sitting. Unless I'm just imagining some things, or I don't know. But, um, yeah. A lot of square textures. Same, uh, same stump. Just different angle. And I like, uh, like the, like, white and orange colors of it. And a little bit of the brown with that blurry green background. It's kind of cool to look at. Same thing, just different angle. Looks kind of like a rock spire or something that you would see on maybe um, some planet or something. Hmm. This is more uh, More of the same log. This one looks like a more of a blurred background a little bit than the other one. Just by a little bit. And this is a down view of that log. 
and uh, I was trying to get it to where I could have this in focus but like I said the uh, DSLR lens the 55 to 250 I can't really get close to stuff I have to be farther away and where I was standing I, I, I could only focus on this it was the closest that I could focus so but yeah still turned out pretty good I think same stump just different angle again because uh, I wanted to have a different background behind it instead of just just the green blurry I wanted to have a little bit of green and um, white area in, in the uh, photo same thing again I'm gonna move along you've already seen these nothing too interesting more just random textures and shapes it's kind of like a, a U shape and um, kind of looks like a some kind of candy bar or something there the shape of it and here's a bird this is the same type of bird I think as the one that um, you've seen that was on the side of the reservoir the little, little um, bird that was in the grass not the big bird um, not the crane or the eagle but the um, well, obviously not the crane or the eagle, but it was the one that you see on the side of the reservoir. They were, they were all over the place. There's another picture of it. He's like, he was moving. I can't tell what he was doing. There's more of a spider web over there again. There's spider webs all over the place. And this is a photo I was taking with. Um, where I changed the exposure to where it was really low um, as far as the uh, ISO was really low and the shutter speed was really high so it made everything darker and because of that the sun was still really bright but it made everything else a lot darker so it gave it that uh, that look I took a couple of them those kind of hard because I didn't have any sunglasses on so I only did this within a span of like two seconds um, because it was hurting my eyes so but I, I guess I could have used my um, sunglasses but then I can't look through the viewfinder because I have to have my face up against it to uh, to see see what I'm uh, looking at and this was kind of a uh, the fact that I was kind of going for but more uh, one wanted to shine more but I think in the, the next photo after this it was too much but I like how the sun comes through. You've got the texture of all these little leaves and everything and the branches all, all around it. And um, yeah, I like how the light catches on those leaves right there and makes them glow. It's kind of a transparent look to them. I like to try that with, if I get my um, uh, macro reversing ring i wonder if i can get like underneath the leaf and take a photo where it's like light shining through it and like you see stuff above it that would be pretty cool and this is the same as that similar but it was way too bright some vines there what in the world looks like a snail or something's on it i'm not sure though There we go. That's more, uh, that's, well, I don't know. That looks more interesting to look at. But this one's like a, the exposure and everything's proper. Like, as far as the brightness and everything, but it's not uh, as interesting to look at as that, I don't, I don't think, at least. I think it's just because of the, the way the leaves look in there. But yeah, more interesting texture on the tree, the bark of it. And we got here. Got what kind of those little tiny pieces of, of uh, stuff growing on the tree. <laughs> I wonder how long it would take to try to draw that exactly. All the little tiny details the branches and everything it'd take a while especially like this texture here it looks like it'd be kind of it'd take a while you could like maybe stipple it i guess that might work and 
and same photo not much different there and this was a bench that's um at the top of the hill as soon as you walk up all the steps um, this is here but I like the texture in the wood it looked like like a water drop and then like spreads out but uh, found that found that interesting to look at as well mm -hmm. there's little flowers there's one little lone plant there hmm. what do you think of this one hmm it looks like a lonely picture or a sad picture, but it also looks happy at the same time. It kind of looks like the bench is like holding up the cloud or something. Like the cloud's setting there. He's just hanging out on the bench. So, I'm going to move to the next one. And this is just, I like the way the, um, the branches looked against the clouds. With the real dark, dark areas of the bark and the really white areas of the clouds. And to get this look, I just had um, my f-stop. Well, I'm trying to remember what my f-stop was. It wasn't too low, really, because I want to get more in focus. It's kind of higher. But I dropped my shutter speed way down. And um, I w was standing there for about a second or two. And so there was a longer exposure time. And so it made the clouds really bright in comparison to the um, bark of the wood. But the bark of the wood, even when I raised the exposure and everything, it was still dark compared to that. And so it gave me this look. It kind of looks like, in a way, if you were looking at a giant piece of ice and there's cracks going through it and it's all broken in a way. Like, it's kind of how it looks here. You can kind of look at it that way. Go to the next one and this is just another uh, picture of the bird there and um, there had to have been hundreds of them out there they were just all over the place um, what type of bird is that if you know what type of birds these are go ahead and let me know in the comments because I'm uh, not that knowledgeable on different types of birds either Although I look at a lot of stuff in nature, I cannot remember the names of them. I remember what they look like, but this can never really match the names. So, yeah, moving on to the next one. Same thing, just a different angle. And this was just a view from my car. Um, was just practicing uh, getting a, a blurry background and having some stuff in focus. And just kind of wanted to get that look to it, but. I like the texture on the steering wheel though. It's like a It kinda looks like Hmm. I'm not sure how to describe the texture, but I'm thinking. I guess it kinda looks like mud or something like if you look at the ground it's like muddy I'm not sure but yeah kind of an interesting texture there same thing just at the higher level of the steering wheel that's about it and a really blurry background I didn't think I would get this much of a blurry background with a f-stop of four I thought I'd have to go much lower, but I guess if something's that close and focused, then it's going to work. Which, it's pretty good for macro photography. If I have like a little bug on a branch or something, and I can make everything around it blurry. So, And that is all of the photos for today. Um, I'll be taking more of them, and if there's any places that you suggest that I should go to, um, there's not a whole lot around me. I mean, there's some parks and stuff, but if you have any ideas of uh, some times to take photos of, or maybe some places, uh, maybe a different type of park or something, go ahead and let me know in the comments below, and uh, I'll uh, I'll consider going to one of them. Um, I'm probably going to go to uh, a few different parks that are near me. Um, I have to think of some other places as well. Something besides just a park. 
Um, maybe some place that has like gardens and flowers or something. Maybe some kind of. Maybe I can go to the zoo. That would be interesting. I think the zoo is like an hour and a half from me though. Maybe I can do that one day. But any, anyways, um, if you have any questions or suggestions about anything from the photos that I showed you, or any ideas for the textures you've seen as far as something that I could draw, go ahead and let me know in the comments below and uh, I'll get back with you on that. and We'll see what we can create, but these images help me inspire some of my creativity and some ideas that I had for drawing. And like when I saw those weird red bugs and um, the other textures on the rocks and all that. Sometimes just getting out and seeing things and going do, and doing things rather than just sitting in one spot all the time drawing. It's nice to have a break sometimes to just get out, get some fresh air, and to take a break from everything because a lot of times I find that I have creativity that just comes to me. A lot of the time when I'm not drawing, a lot of the times when I'm just doing basic tasks of maybe I'm sitting down eating a meal or I'm out for a walk or I'm just going out to um, take the trash out or to check the mail or I'm just driving somewhere or something. I, I'll have some random creative idea come to me and a lot of those times I'll try to write it down or I'll um, type it up on my phone, save it um, so that I, when I go home then I can work on that. But just get out sometimes and have some fun. But that's all for today for this video and the pictures and I'll be... Uh, doing more of these sometime so go ahead and let me know if you have any suggestions and i'll see you again in the next video stay creative stay inspired and you have a good day see ya